Now, opposition parties in Azerbaijan have told Al Jazeera they may boycott this year's presidential elections. They're angry with the government and what they regard as the increasing authoritarianism of the president and his handling of the country's booming economy. Well, Azerbaijan is rich in oil and made about $3 billion from it in the last year alone. But it also has big problems. Inflation was 17% last year, pushing up prices and making life very difficult for most of the population. The average salary is just $250 a month, and critics of the president say most of the country's wealth has stayed in the hands of his allies. From Baku, our correspondent Lawrence Lee sent this report. Baku must be a great place to live if you're wealthy. The boutiques, the elegant boulevards, the glamour of it all. Like Monte Carlo on the Caspian, your future guaranteed by the black gold, which oozes from the ground and which is exported throughout the world, filling the government's coffers and making a few people here unbelievably rich. And then there's the rest of Azerbaijan, the bleakness of the winter weather, the lack of hope, the hovels where most people have to live. More than half here survive below the poverty line. It's really difficult. There's nowhere to work. We can't even keep one or two sheep or a cow because the feed is too expensive. All they've given us is a bit of gas for the first time this year. This area north of Baku is the country's flower growing region, traditionally one of its best exports. Now most of the industry is as dead as the rose plants. In this land that's full of oil and gas, the government failed to provide any heat and they had to burn their own greenhouses to keep warm. 70% of the flour trade here simply vanished. They keep saying it's going to be good, it will be good, but when's it going to be good? We can't live on just bread, gas and electricity. We want to raise our kids, see them get married. It's our national wealth. Why haven't we seen any of it? Just a couple of years ago, Azerbaijan looked like the latest in a line of post-Soviet countries to have an anti-government uprising. But unlike Georgia and Ukraine, when the pro-democracy opposition took to the streets, the police crushed them. The Americans and Europeans, so enthusiastic about democracy elsewhere, seem suddenly not very interested. The result now that the popular opposition has had its offices closed and has been decimated by the government. Not only me, but the majority of Azeris expected more. When President Bush repeatedly used the word freedom, this inspired hope in Azerbaijan. Unfortunately, his administration said it stands for democracy in the whole world, but has very cosy relations with the authoritarian regime of Azerbaijan. We are very concerned about this. So since the failed revolution of 2005, political opposition here has vanished. There will be no election this year to speak of. The trappings of the rich are under no threat. There's no question that it was here that the pro-democracy movement that had been sweeping through Eastern Europe finally came off the rails. And there's no question that since 2005, the government here has carried out a concerted crackdown on the opposition, the biggest party of which has now told us that it will almost certainly boycott this year's elections in protest. And therefore, the government will be able to carry on absolutely unchallenged. The days then of President Bush's freedom on the march seem a very very long time ago. There's a mountain to climb if most here are to escape from poverty and in future years they'll need to spend a vast amount of their oil money on social projects. The run-up to this year's election should be a chance for the West to reiterate concerns about democracy. But as long as the oil keeps quietly flowing, that's not very likely. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, in Baku, Azerbaijan.